I'm happy to be here to tell you a little bit more about what has happened with KDH in the last 30 years and where we are now and where we are aiming at. Uh, I actually changed my title a little bit when, when uh, very late. Uh, I added Swedish International University. And it was actually a purpose uh, because I think it's very important that we are an international university, and I would define that a little bit more later, but it's also very important that we, that we are part of the Swedish university tradition with Swedish values and, and, and uh, Swedish legislation and, and rules, which uh, sometimes can be uh, an advantage and sometimes can be a disadvantage if you want to be a purely international university. Uh, it's a very small detail, this word Swedish, but I will show you the, the importance of it later. Uh, uh, what makes a university national? Well, I think most universities today claim they are a little bit international. Uh, and of course, the most obvious uh, part of, of a university are the students. If you don't have international students, you are at, not at all international. And of course, KTH has today, uh, I always ask myself this question, but something about 25 to 30 percent of our students are actually not born in Sweden, or they have a background from another university outside of Sweden, and, and uh, in that way, we have a very, very international student body at the university. It's, of course, also important that we have faculty, teachers, professors that are international. Uh, today, uh, I think uh, I also had the job as Dean of Engineer Electrical Engineering at KDH. And when we recruit uh, faculty, professors today, uh, I would say that uh, two out of three or even three out of four are recruited from national background. They are not uh, KDH students or they are not Swedish students originally. They have a background from an international university uh, everywhere in Europe, Asia uh, and as well, and, and of course North America especially. Uh, and together these students and faculty uh, form our international body, so to say. So that is, of course, the prerequisite for, for being international. But I think it's more important also to have an international presence. You cannot only be international at home, you also have to be present at various locations in the world. You have to participate in both scientific conferences and in, in, in other types of conferences, being part of, of the society as a university. Uh, apart from presence, presence uh, you also have to be visible and you have to work in a way which is a little bit different from what, what we used to work in in the 80s or early 90s we have to work with marketing and not marketing in sweden we have to market ourselves also in in the rest of the world we have to work with with the uh, internet we have to work with social media we have to be visible for students and actually uh, sometimes we find that students from China or India are much, much better prepared to study at KTH than our Swedish students because they've studied every page on the internet about the university and knows every detail. So we have to be visible with a high quality message on, 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 on the social media as well. Finally, and most important perhaps, to be international is to be recognized by other universities. If you're, you can be very national in many ways, but if, you don't, if you're not known f uh, among other peers, uh, that you have to be a well-known university to be really international. Colleagues all over the world has to realize that this is a, fa a fairly good, or at least a very good or excellent university in some way. And that recognition is, of course, done by education and by research. Um, Let's go back a little bit to, to my background. I'm actually also a proud KTH alumni. I started in the early 80s. Did we have any international students at KTH at that time? Well, I can't remember. I don't, I, if we had one or two, very, very few students with an international background. There were a few from Norway and a few from Finland, but that's about it. Uh, among PhD students, there were a few more. Uh, PhD students, uh, perhaps at each department, you could have one or two. So you could see international people. But 
the difference at that time was that they very quickly learned Swedish. They had to. If you, come, uh, if you came from Germany, you learned Swedish in, in, in six months, and then you worked in Swedish. So in that way, we were not really international from that point of view. Uh, did I have any teachers with an international background? I had. There were a few. There were some from Norway. We also had some from, from, from US, and there were some other ones from Europe. But they actually had been in Sweden for a very long time. They spoke Swedish. Uh, they taught in Swedish. They uh, worked in Swedish. So from that point of view, it was also a very national university. Uh, and of course, now, as you might have heard earlier today in, in other lectures, in the early 90s, this transformation of KTH started. Uh, and at that time, in a very small scale, we had a few master programs that were in English. They were international master students coming and, and they were very special, and, and very often it was in very odd subjects. The, the smallest subjects at KDH, they started to be international. Uh, whereas the big ones still were very, very national. Today, it's, well, it's, it's 25 years later, we have all our master programs taught in English. Everything in the fourth and the fifth year are taught in English, which means that uh, you have to speak English, you have to work in English, all the way through the last two years of your education. Uh, and we have this 30% of international students. And what is very important is that we have achieved recognition for this. Uh, I think among international students, among Chinese students, Indian students, uh, other Asian students, we are recognized as a very, very good teaching environment. We are well known for good education. And, and uh, that is very, very, very important for being on this international market. If you're not, if you don't have a good education, if you don't have a very good education, I would say rather, uh, it's not interesting for the students coming from outside of Sweden. We have to f uh, stress that fact. As very interesting education, sometimes I claim that a very good or excellent education might be even more important than excellent research. I'm pretty sure that they if you're coming from outside, you will recognize KDH as a very good teaching environment. But very few students can tell what kind of research we are doing in, in a specific area. So even if we like to talk about research, education might be the most important part of it. And that's very important in this increase in competition for students in the world. Uh, when we Let's go back to, to the faculty a little bit as well. Uh, to be an excellent or leading university on a global market uh, is very important as a university because it, it's necessary to, to be able to recruit the best teachers. So very often we think that we can do good enough by being very local. But a university as KDH, we have to recruit, have to, to target excellent teachers, excellent faculty, excellent professors, and, and uh, to get this kind of people that re uh, transforms our university into something uh, better than just a, a Swedish university. Uh, and of course, that is done by, by excellence and by, by rankings of, of KDH. And, and if we are not highly ranked, it will be difficult to attract uh, the best talents. Uh, a problem, though, is that today many of our international faculty, due to the fact that we speak English all the time, we, we, we speak English during the lectures, we speak English during most of the meetings, project meetings, perhaps not all, but very many of them. Uh, many of our faculty, especially those with an Anglo-Saxon background, they never use Swedish as a working language. And that is coming back to this Swedish word in the beginning. I think it's very necessary and very important that our faculty also are, are um, convinced to use Swedish as, as a working language. And, and uh, to transform KTH to a better university requires that they also learn Swedish because uh, this is not a researcher hotel, this is a university. And, and that requires that you work with a society and the society actually speaks Swedish most of the time. Also in companies, actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, to work on the international market, of course, you have to do research. 
and you have to collaborate with people from, from all over the world. And today, almost 60% of what we publish, 60% of what we publish at KTH regarding research, reports, journals, conference papers, whatever, is written with uh, colleagues from, from outside of Sweden. So they are, so they, they call them international publications. So they're at least one or two from, from another university, another part of the world. So 60% of what we do is done in collaboration with someone from outside of Sweden. Uh, of course, uh, among them, European projects are the most important ones. And, and uh, every year we get about 30 million euros in funding from the European Union, which is a substantial figure. Uh, and and um, that's, of course, very important. Also very important is that a vast majority of all international projects are between researchers of uh, research groups at two universities. We talk about research co collaboration. This is very often not a case for KTH as a university as such. It's from a researcher to researcher at uh, different universities. That is really the better, bread and butter of, of, of uh, the research collaborations internationally. But you need also to work with, with uh, strategic partners. And at KTH, we have something called strategic university partners, which is only five, we might have a sixth one this year, five universities in the world that are, are, are recognized as this kind of, of a strategic partner. And the reason why is that you have to form a platform to, to be able to, to create new ideas uh, outside of the peer-to-peer -peer research work you do with, with, with other colleagues. Our partners are University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign in the United States. It's Shanghai Chia Tong. It's Hong Kong University of Science and Technology. It's Nanjiang Technological University in Singapore. By the way, we have a delegation of, I think, 20, 25 people from Nanjiang here today at KTH. And also Tokyo uh, University. I'm very interested in the fact that we actually work together with the other universities in Stockholm, like Karolinska Institute and Stockholm University, when it comes to these kind of strategic university partnerships, both with Tokyo and with Illinois. And I think that is also very, well, interesting and fruitful collaboration across Stockholm. And that is of very, very high importance for us because uh, Stockholm is a very well-known town in the world. We put Stockholm on the map as a university town with three very well-known universities. And, and uh, that is, of course, very important. Uh, let's now wrap it up a little bit. Uh, as you might have understood, we have done a lot to become a true international university. Uh, I would say we are a true international university. Uh, we have uh, invested a lot in education, in recruitments of faculty, in research projects. And we have an extremely strong reputation, especially in Asia and in Europe and in the US. We cannot be everywhere. Uh, KTH more or less have activities, I would say, everywhere in the world. We have in Latin America, South America, United States, Australia, uh, Middle East, uh, Central Asia, Southeast Asia, and, and, and Pacific Asia. So we have collaborations more or less everywhere. But in the future, it might be that we focus on certain areas. And I would say that Asia and Europe are probably the number ones in that, in that context, perhaps also North America. But Sweden is a small country, and, and, and we, are, we are a small university if we compare with the huge ones abroad, and we have to prioritize in, in many ways. Uh, why do we have this position? Well, it's a combination of education, research, and not at least also innovation. Stockholm is a very innovative city. I think many people know Stockholm because we are normally ranked very, very, very high uh, on, on most rankings uh, when it comes to innovation. Sweden is number one in, in Europe for innovation, and, and uh, Stockholm is considered to be the num top five cities in the world when it comes to innovation. And also the fact that uh, in the Stockholm region, innovations per capita, if you ever can calculate that, are as high here as they are in the Bay Area, San Francisco, and the United States, as well as in, 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 North, um, in Boston area, in, in, in New England, in the United States. 
So Stockholm is very innovative, which helps us in promoting KDH. Uh, however, KTH is not a huge university. We have 30,000 students, and we collaborate with universities that have 45,000 students. Uh, economically or financially, we are also small in this huge world. Uh, so we are actually a small university from a small country in a relatively distant part of the world. So that is a really, really bad starting point if you want to be international. But I think we can work together and in a very Swedish way, coming back to this Swedish word in the, in the, in the first sentence, in the title, uh, we can work continuously on our reputation as leading technical university and to be a trustful partner. Because if you go to companies outside in the world uh, or other uh, people outside of, in, in the world, if you, if you talk about companies, and the advantage of Swedish companies is normally they are very trustful compared to other companies. So trustful companies are a very useful concept in Sweden. And I think we can be a very trustful university as well. We are not the biggest, but we are very trustful. We can generate excellent research, excellent teaching, despite being in a small scale. Uh, sometimes I compare this with like a Swedish football team without Zlatan, or like a Swedish ice hockey team. We don't have the very, very best individuals always. We might have sometimes, but very often we don't have it. Despite that fact, Sweden is producing teams that can really be uh, competitive in the world. And I think this is the final point for me, that being a Swedish university in the international world uh, relies on the fact that we are a team of people producing uh, a KTH that can be strong in the future by collaborating rather than being too individual. Thank you.